Good morning, beloveds. It took a little extra time to go live this morning. So if I'm making a silly face, sorry about that. <clears throat> All right. We are wrapping the month of January up. We have about, I think, February, March, and April left. Then I'm going to be on the hunt for a new book. Ooh. All right. So. It is January 31st. Our title is Life in Paradox. Our author is Nancy Purcell. This is from A Flowchart of Life from 2012. All right. The paradoxes of life keep us on the quest for our own truth. This is an individual quest. We cannot just accept external answers to our internal questions. There is no one or nothing that has the answers to our personal life questions. We are responsible for our own life map. This spiritual map must be exposed through self-realization. We can use the wonderful examples of paradoxes as we build our personal belief systems. I believe that we can find them helpful. Let's look at the Sermon on the Mount found in the Gospel of Matthew. This section of the Gospels has been labeled in many different ways. Each person interprets it through their own point of view. As we read it, we can accept any point of, from the outer, or we can go to our inner knower and find a part of our personal map for spiritual growth. This is our choice. All life is choice, therefore the paradox. Choosing an open-minded process for assimilating another's opinion will lead us to our own awareness of how to apply this to our spiritual growth. I believe that this approach expands our questions into possibilities. It may help us to move in a certain direction, but it's not the answer. I believe that we cannot make another person's opinion our truth. We are each on the journey to unfolding our potential, our possibilities as human beings, evolving our spiritual essences. We are moving forward to expand our spiritual selves and create healthy, happy, and prosperous lives. I'm not sure. Okay. I'm not going to go there. <clears throat> so basically, I say a very similar thing. I can't walk your path for you. What I can do is I can hold up my light so that you can see where to put your feet. I can't walk your path for you. Um, and I can show you the guideposts. I can show you all of the signs, but you still have to interpret the signs for yourself. Uh, and that's one of those things that it's like your, how many paths are there to, to the top of the mountain? As many people as there are on the planet. That's how many paths. Okay. The only person who is doing it wrong is the person who is running around telling everybody else their path is wrong. Um, the truth is that the path to God is as individual as the person. There is no one person, there is no one religion who has all of the answers. Okay? That is the truth. Uh, every religion has a piece of the truth. It is up to, and here is where we're going to get very Gnostic. <laughs> <clears throat> it is up to the individual to take the piece of the truth that their religion is giving them and use that to unlock their own path. Okay. Religions are good when they are guides. Religions are good when they create a community that is encompassing and embracing and loving. Religions are bad when they create isolated communities that 
think that they are the only ones who have all of the truth. Okay. Um, when they deliberately keep their people from of the larger community and when they say only we have the truth well one they're wrong they they don't have the truth they have part of the truth everybody has part of the truth um and they are unwilling to share with anybody outside of their particular group so um it's one of the things that i love about interfaith communities um, we actually apparently have a thriving interfaith community up here in the woodlands uh, <clears throat> where they get together and they do events together and they share uh, and they welcome outsiders with open arms. It's like, yeah, come visit us. Come visit us. Come see what it is we're about. Come and get to know us. Um, and because Ernest never intended to start his own branch. What he wanted, what he said is, hey, I found this really cool thing and I want to share it with you. And then you can take it back to whatever community you belong to to make your practice better. He never intended to start his own. Uh, and so, but he also, Ernest also believed, it's like, I'm not telling you anything you don't know. All I am doing is awakening within you what you already do know. And that's what we say in Science of Mind. It's like, I'm not telling you anything you don't know. I'm telling you, all I'm doing is reminding you what you already do know. It's like, we're not teaching you how to use these principles. You are already using these principles every day in your life. What we're doing is bringing you to a conscious awareness that you are using these principles so that you can use them more effectively. That's what we're about. <clears throat> that's that's science mind and so she she mentioned the the sermon of the mount <clears throat> and one of the ways the bible is intended to be used is to put yourself in every character's pl place you know so if you go and read ruth then you get to be ruth and you get to be naomi and you get to be was it i forget the husband uh, the new husband, you know, you get to be all of those people and see how it informs you um, on the Sermon on the Mount. The same thing. You get to be all of those people and see how it informs you. Um, and the most powerful line that I heard her say. Let me go back because this is definitely not a throwaway line. This is a mic drop line, a mic drop line. I believe that we cannot make another person's opinion our truth. It means you got to do your own work. It means you've got to make regular trips to the source of your own being. We have got to make regular trips to the source of our own being. It means that we need to have a regular spiritual practice. It means that we need to make sure that we are making time for meditation. And it means that we make time for treatment or prayer. Um, even if it's just a little bit of time, you know, where, where we sit and go, okay, you know what? All right, universe or divine, divine mind or divine nature or whatever it is that you want to call it. You know, what is it that I need to know today? What is it? That what, what truth do I need to act upon today? You know, um, and as we get to know the source of our own being, then we get to know ourselves better. And as we get to know ourselves better, then we get to know the world around us better because we see how we interact with that world and how that world interacts with us. And then we can make better choices or if not better choices, at least we can make different choices, you know, that would arguably be better because we are now conscious of who we are, whose we are, and what it is that we're here to do. 
Because what it is we're here to do is to experience. And if you don't like the experiences you're having, well, you have the power to change that. We have the power to change our own lives. And that's just really amazing. Uh, and sometimes it starts with deciding how we feel about the situation. And then we can go to the source of our own being and say, you know what? I thought maybe this is what I wanted, but turns out it's not. Let's try something different. And it's a reminder that it's a partnership. I haven't talked about that in a while because I've been busy talking about other things. Um, you are a co-creator. We are co-creators in our lives with that divine nature, with spirit. When we decide we want something, spirit will pour all of the resources into us to bring it to uh, to bring that experience to us if it is in alignment with spirit. I mean, that's the one caveat. <clears throat> spirit can't bring you something that's not in alignment with its own nature. So, you know, be, be, that's that's one thing we want to be aware of. And I think for, mo for the most part, most people are going to be in alignment with spirit. Because at the center of us, the source of our own being, we're good. You know? That's why I say get to know the source of your own being. Get to know who the source of your own being knows you to be. Uh, because the source of your being, the divine, the divine, we'll just go with the divine for the moment, knows you to be good because that's all the divine knows is good. You know? That's why you get to let go of everything else that everybody has ever said about you and get to know who that person is. <clears throat> All right. And stop making other people's opinion your truth. Go and find out for yourself. Go and find out for yourself. Uh, when it comes to spiritual work, in the end, it is your path. And you get to walk it. And you get to make the decisions on your spiritual path. There is nobody that is a higher authority on your spiritual path than you. You can go and listen to all of the enlightened beings that you want. And you can listen to their wisdom. And you can listen to their guidance. But it's still your path. And it, it, you get to make the decisions. And nobody gets to tell you that you're wrong on your own spiritual path. Unless, of course, you're out of alignment with spiritual. Um, yeah, there are a couple of paths out there that you're like, what were they thinking? So, but it is your path. It is your power. It is your truth. Explore that. Take all of the wisdom and the guidance that you possibly can. But remember that there is nothing between you and God except what you put there. Nobody else has the power to get between you and God. Ever. Ever. All right. I think I'm going to let that one go there. This was an interesting little reading. So, Life in Paradox. Okay. Nancy Purcell, A Flow Chart of Life. Might be worth looking into. Um, okay. Uh, let's see. And, you know, the, the mission of... The mission today, should we choose to accept it? Don't make anyone... Don't make another person's opinion your truth. And that is truth with a capital T. I'm not saying they're not telling you the truth, but don't make it your truth. Go find your own. Go and test your truth. All right? Don't make anyone's opinion your truth. Mission today. Make regular trips to the source of your own being and check it. Okay? 
All right, beloveds, that is the mission today. Should we choose to accept it? The other mission, which is the same mission I give you every day, which is that spiritual practice of self-care. Okay? Do something loving for yourself. Do something kind for yourself. Do something compassionate for yourself. Be it one thing, be it three things, be it all the things. Because in the end, that is the goal. You are your own best test subject. And I understand that practicing love, kindness, and compassion on ourselves can be kind of difficult. Okay? Which is why I encourage you to do it. You deserve your own love, your own kindness, your own compassion. And the more you practice it, the easier it gets. And you will find that it will make a lot of the things that you do, especially the thing, the more difficult things that we do in life, because we all got them, it makes them easier. So practice it on yourself. My favorite suggestion of all time, take a deep breath before you speak. I'm a big believer in the pause, okay? Take the pause. Because when you take the pause, then you respond instead of react. Because when you react, you are reacting as you have been taught to do. When you take the moment to, res to take, when you take the moment, you take the pause, you take that breath, then you respond, you respond with who you really are, all right? It makes a difference, it makes a difference. Sometimes the first thought that pops up and you're like, that's not me. You're right. It's not. It's your conditioning. Okay. So take the deep breath. Look at that first reaction and then respond. It's the biggest, most loving, kind and compassionate thing we can do for ourselves and others. Because it is easier not to say it than to have to take it back. Because it's really hard to take words back when we say things that we don't mean. Um. The other, take a walk, take a break, take a break, take a nap. Um, they both have real, I, I really do mean go, take a walk. You know, go get your blood moving, get your oxygen moving. Uh, but I also mean walk away from the situation or walk to a new situation. Okay. You're, you're going to find that the more science of mind we get, we're always talking on two levels. We may be talking on a literal level, but there's always going to be a metaphor, metaphorical that. Take a break. Sometimes what we need to do is go do something else for a little while. Just let what it, whatever mess it is lie. Go do something else and then a solution will naturally occur. It will just rise to the surface. Okay. Or you can take a break and go talk to somebody else. They may have a, they may have an idea to get you going in the right direction. All right. Just don't, don't take their opinion as truth. Um, and then the, the, take a nap. Well, that one is pretty literal. I'm a big believer in naps. I was just tired last night. And I was, according to my Fitbit, I was out at 730 on the couch. I'm like, well, okay. I was trying to watch this really great show called Finding Atlantis from the History Channel. And I didn't make it. <laughs> so, you know, get, get some rest. Take a nap. Um, take a nap. But it, it's also to make sure you check your stress levels. All right. Um... I do also like to remind you to eat dessert first. Chocolate is the first step to fixing every everything, in my opinion. It may not be for you because I do know people do, who don't like chocolate. I do. Shocking, I know, right? Um, but I also want to remind you that it means don't save the good stuff. Don't save the good stuff. Eat the fancy food. Wear the fancy clothes. Use the fancy dishware. Don't wait for a special occasion. Make the occasion special. All right. Um, and then joy. Joy is a quality of God. Therefore, joy is a quality of you. Make sure that you make room for joy. No matter what is going on in the world, no matter what is going on in your life, you still deserve joy. Please make room for it. Okay. All right. One of my joys is sitting right next to me being very, very quiet. So, um, all right. The rest of the suggestions, basic self-care, do something to engage your mind and your body, unless today is your day of rest. Drink plenty of water. Hydration is super important, um, especially in the, the peak of the summer, the height of the winter. We don't think about it in the winter, but with the heat running all the time, we end up a little dehydrated. Your brain works better. Your body works better. Your skin looks better when you are well hydrated. Drink plenty of water. It can have other stuff in it. Frequently, I drink a, a trace mineral drink, which trace minerals don't taste good. So it's also got lemon and stevia in it. <laughs> And that's what I'm saying. But it's 12 ounces of water too, right? Okay. Um, and then can you imagine me on caffeine? Mm, 
I don't drink coffee. I do drink herbal teas because again, no caffeine, but here we are. Um, get five to 10 minutes of bright light early in your day. It is about, a, it's called a circadian rhythm. It's a natural hormone cycle. Um, and when we get that five to 10 minutes of bright light in our morning, it kind of kickstarts that circadian rhythm. You'll have more energy during the day. You'll sleep better at night. Uh, it, we, we had a week of rain last week, like literally a week of rain. We had one nice day <laughs> last week. It was Thursday. It rained all day, every day, including Friday, but it just started later in the afternoon. So, you know, um, so I've been getting that sunlight and it, the temperature is such that right now that skin, that, that sun on my skin in that, that eight o'clock is seven thirty to eight o'clock. That's when I'm out. It, it feels really good. Now I was out at 11 and not so nice, but you know, um, so I'm, I'm a big believer in sunscreen, but five to 10 minutes between seven and nine sunlight supports your vitamin D supports your circadian rhythms. Yeah. But if it's out of your schedule, artificial light will work too. You want five to 10 minutes of bright light. If the light in your house is not bright enough, sun lamp, seasonal effect disorder lamp. Don't spend a whole lot of money on them. At this point, they should be relatively, you know, you don't want, don't go cheap, but don't spend a whole lot of money. So, all right. Yep. Ernest Holmes quote, open the windows of your soul. Allow the breath of heaven to remind you that you do live in heaven right here, right now. It's all around us all the time. So we're talking about paradoxes and we're talking about truth. Uh, and that is what that quote means to me. I love that quote from the standpoint that it reminds me that it's all gone. Everywhere we look, we're all made of the same substance. If you think about it, you know, get, go from the molecules to the atoms, to the electrons, neutrons, positrons, to the quarks, to the photons. We're all made of the same stuff. We're all made of God stuff. We're all made of star stuff, you know, but it also reminds me heaven is not a locality. Ernest said that. I think that is just the coolest phrase ever, ever. Heaven is not a locality. It's not a place we have to get to. It is a state of mind. It is a state of consciousness. And once we figure that out, all bets are off, right? All bets are off. Because it means, it absolutely means that heaven can be any place we are if we put our mind to it. All right. And the best advice I can give you, the best jumping off point that I can give you, or if I'm going to shine my light on your path is what, as I like to say, I'm going to quote Emma Curtis Hopkins, look for the good and praise it. You want to start to create that heavenly mindset, that heavenly state of consciousness, look for the good in your life and praise it. Speak it out loud. The homework that I gave you, I don't think of it as homework. It's like every day, write down three things that you are grateful for and don't repeat for seven days. Try it for seven days. Don't repeat. And I'm talking, you can go as small as a well folded, folded fiddle, a well folded fiddle fitted sheet. Can I talk today? No. You know, that that is considered a good. That is considered a good. A nice meal. The fact that there's food in your refrigerator. The, the the fact that the sun is shining. The fact that the birds are singing. I mean, right there, I've named, what, five? So you can find three things every day. And if you need to get started in the morning, do it first thing in the morning. Or if you want to get a good night's sleep, do it before you go to bed. Name three things that you're grateful for. Three goods in your life. And see your watch your life change. Watch your life change. All right. Yep. Now I'm going to, I'm at the social media. We are Creative Life Spiritual Center, Creative Life Spark. I'm the running Rev Ryan on the social medias that I am on. Uh, I encourage you to, right now I've got a special project running on all of the social medias. So, you know, there it's, it's running on all three platforms that I have anything to do with. Um, where Je on Sunday, Jesse just, he answered a bunch of questions and then he took the steps of treatment and really took them apart. So I'm each day I'm posting one of those little snippets because they're like, one of them was two minutes. One of them was like five minutes. So each day I'm posting up those 
uh, answers. So please, you know, like, subscribe, share. Cost you nothing but a couple of minutes because he, the questions that he answered are really good. He answered, um, are we religion or are we a religion or spiritual? He's, he answered, what do we call God? He answered, um, what is, uh, it, what, what's the difference between treatment and prayer? The one today, it's going to be a short, I think today's going to be a short one. Uh, is what's more limiting, um, resentment or regret. So, um, so please look out for those, share them wherever you can share them because they're really good. They're really good and they're, they're short and they're punchy and good answers. So, and if you have questions, let us know. Uh, I, I say, Hey, why don't we do this? And Jesse was like, I can commit to that. So if you have a question, you know, I'll pin him down and we'll, I'll get a recorded answer and get it up on the platforms for you. So, um, all right. Uh, and if you want to know what's going on with the center, email info at creativelife.org. That will get you on the constant contact. It, um, it's, it's one email a, a week and the hot links are hot. So check that out. All right. Where was I going? To encourage you to have a great day, a wondrous day, a fantastic day, a magical day, an enchanted day, a wonderful day, an awesome day, an amazing day, a search out your truth day, a kind day, a compassionate day, a middle of the week day, a take break day, a take a walk day, a uh, get stuff done day, a don't take yourself too seriously day, a silly day, a you got this day, a good day. And if that is too much pressure, simply have a day. You are enough just as you are. You're a beloved child. No, you are a beloved expression of the divine. I've stole that, stolen that phrase from, or borrowed that phrase from one of our authors. You are a beloved expression of the divine. You are a brilliant light, a divine spark. You are spirit in motion. You are God in action. As Reverend Jesse likes to call us, you're a godly. Know the truth of your being. Peel back the layers of everything you've been told and get to know who God knows you to be. All right. Because I can promise you, if I can promise you nothing else, the person that God knows you to be is good. Start there. And build yourself back up. All right, beloveds. Reverend David will be on around 5 p.m. with you. I'll be back with you around 9 a.m. tomorrow. Take care of yourself. Know that you are loved. And I will see you next time.